Georgia. We're in Santa Monica. I'm here at 42nd Street, New York, New York for the PlayStation E3 experience. PlayStation E3 experience. I asked the place where I work for if I can have this day off in order to go to this event. The music for this week's episode of Game News Update was provided by at Novoisky. You can check out more great stuff at soundcloud.com slash Novoisky. This week is a very special week for Game News. E3 happened and the world of video games went mad. The impossible was promised. The long-awaited was unveiled. The moon turned to blood and the sea boiled forth in the darkness. Lo and behold, it is the Electronic Entertainment Expo of 2015. We have much to say about it, for this is the Black Man and Robin Game News Update. To start with, on Sunday Nintendo held the Nintendo World Championship, the first such competition in many years. In the end, it was Cosmo vs. John Numbers playing against one another in Super Mario Maker. Now, they were playing custom levels created by the folks at the Nintendo Treehouse. Both competitors found themselves challenged by these levels, but in the end, there could be only one Nintendo World Champion. John Numbers turned up on top. On that day, Nintendo announced that Earthbound Beginnings would be coming to the Wii U. It's out now, and it's an English version of Mother, which folks here in the United States have been waiting for for a very long time. It seems that this year, Nintendo really embraced fun. We'll get around to their goofy, enjoyable press conference in a few moments, but first, Bethesda had plenty to say on Sunday evening. The first thing that Bethesda showed off was the new Doom. Of course, it's Doom full of gore and guns, just like always. This time around, it features a built-in map editor and promises plenty of mod support. It's set to be released in spring of 2016 for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. They also showed off the upcoming Battle Cry, which is a free-to-play third-person action game that's set to go into beta worldwide this year on PC. It's been drawing comparisons to Team Fortress 2 since it's class-based, and I must say that visually it's quite pretty. Dishonored 2 was teased, and in this sequel to the critically acclaimed dark Victorian fantasy, you play as either Corvo Atano, the assassin from the first game, or Emily Colvin. It's coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC spring of 2016. Of course, Fallout 4 was shown off. It's coming out on November 10, 2015 for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. In this game, you're fighting for survival in Boston after the city was destroyed by nuclear war. While, of course, it's the sort of Fallout game that we've known for the last few years, there are some interesting new features, such as the crafting system, which lets you make custom items, as well as the ability to build and manage a settlement of survivors. If you pre-order the Collector's Edition, you get a real pit boy that works in the game via a smartphone app for iOS or Android. It's quite expensive, but worth checking out if you're really a big fan. We have the full Fallout 4 trailer, as well as the link to get the special edition of the game, up at blackmanandrobin.com right now. Also announced that night was a game called Fallout Shelter. It's a base building game that's a bit like XCOM meets The Sims, with a little bit of FTL faster than light thrown in. Fallout Shelter is currently available for iOS for free. It's set to come to Android sometime later this year. Thus far, the game has gotten very good receptions from both fans and critics. Also, The Elder Scrolls Legends was announced. It's an upcoming free-to-play card game set in the Elder Scrolls universe, but there's no word on what gameplay is. There's just a pretty trailer, and the promise of PC and iPad support later this year. On Monday, Microsoft opened their press conference with a trailer for Halo 5 Guardians. They showed off some gameplay, and it looked pretty promising. In the game, you play as Master Chief and Spartan Locke. Now, Locke is hunting for the Chief for some reason. It's a bit like in Halo 2 when you switch between Chief and the Arbiter. It's set to come out on October 27, 2015. Next was a teaser for a game called ReCore by Keiji Inafune, the man behind Super Metroid. In this game, you're rolling through a wasteland with a robot dog and it's constantly getting upgraded. That's all we know right now. We haven't a clue about gameplay, but the trailer was very exciting. The crowd then went wild when Microsoft announced that there would be backwards compatibility of a sort for the Xbox One. You'll be able to play Xbox 360 games on the One. At current, 18 games are lined up for back compatibility. Among these are Perfect Dark, Halo Reach, Mass Effect, and Banjo-Kazooie, with more to come. Another exciting announcement was for the Xbox One Elite controller, which looks really cool and is built around customizability. 
you can move around buttons and triggers, which in general is pretty neat, but for gamers with disability, it's absolutely amazing. I have 10 fingers distributed across two hands in a standard configuration, but that's not the case for everybody. Customizable controllers means more options for more people, which is a good thing. While the controller is $150, making it prohibitively expensive for some, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Assuming you weren't sick of all the Fallout 4 news, Fallout 4 was shown off again during Microsoft's conference. However, Microsoft announced that the game will feature mod support on the Xbox One. This is a pretty big surprise, since modding is regarded as one of the pillars of PC gaming. It's an advantage that consoles have been lacking outside of hacking, and for a release as big as Fallout 4, this is a pretty big deal. That said, it certainly made sense in the context of the show. During their conference, Microsoft made a big push for Windows 10 adoption. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 was unveiled, and it looks just as silly as it ought. Forza 6 Horizon was also announced, and a car was lowered from the ceiling. Don't ask. Tom Clancy's The Division was shown off, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege was also on display. The Xbox One version of the game will come with Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2, and it'll be playable on the Xbox One thanks to back compatibility. It was announced that the free-to-play MOBA Gigantic would be going into beta on the Xbox One this August. There are a lot of MOBAs coming out, but Gigantic caught my eye. It's a game in which you have a gigantic guardian on your side, your goal is to keep it alive throughout the game. I also really like the art style of Gigantic, as well as the character designs. Hopefully, it plays as well as it looks. A whole lot of indie games were shown off, including Tacoma, Cuphead, Superhot, and many others. One that caught my attention was called Beyond Eyes. It's a game about a blind girl who assembles the world around her with her other senses. The game offers you a window into what she sees. There's something really beautiful about the game's aesthetic. It has a very distinctive watercolor style. There's something about the painterly style that's reminiscent of The Unfinished Swan. This is definitely a game that I'll be keeping an eye on. On the topic of indie games, Early Access is apparently coming to the Xbox One. You can now pay money to play unfinished games, just like you can on PC. Elite Dangerous, Sheltered, and a couple of others are among the first games in the Xbox Game Preview program. Right after that announcement, a game called Ion was teased. It promises to be an incredibly in-depth MMO from Dean Hall, creator of DayZ, a game that very famously employed early access. Rise of the Tomb Raider was shown off, or at least a QTE-heavy segment with no puzzles to solve. While it was quite a spectacle, it didn't look like very exciting gameplay footage. To be frank, I'd be a little disappointed if all the game consisted of were QTEs, that said, it'll probably feature more classic Tomb Raider gameplay. Perhaps it's just that showing off puzzles being solved wouldn't make for very interesting E3 footage. Rise of the Tomb Raider is set to be released on November 10, 2015. Something that hit everybody by surprise was the Rare Replay, a collection of 30 of Rare's classic games. It's coming out on August 4, 2015, and it was a nice little reminder that Rare isn't dead, in spite of having been gutted by Microsoft. Rare also announced Sea of Thieves, a multiplayer pirate game that's coming to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 in the 2016 holiday season. As Microsoft is essentially obligated to, they showed off more of Fable Legends. There was also an unbelievable HoloLens demo with Minecraft. It really showed off the potential of augmented reality for video games, since while VR is taking off, AR has really never gone very far. HoloLens has the potential to change that. That said, I wouldn't hold my breath on HoloLens actually doing that. The reason I say this is because the demo that was shown off wasn't exactly what the person using the HoloLens was seeing. It was very carefully orchestrated. Like with Natal, I think it might be best to step back and wait a little while to see what the finished product actually is. Gears of War 4, which is set to come out holiday of 2016, seems to now have properly proportioned characters and a rather different feel from the previous games. It seems to lean more in towards survival horror, which is an unusual direction for the games, but fans still seem to be excited for it. Something we didn't see during E3 this year was Kinect. It seems that Microsoft forgot all about their wonderful platform, quite sadly. While they did make a statement after E3 regarding the Kinect, namely that it hasn't been abandoned and that new Kinect games are being made, as a person who owns Kinect, 
I'm a bit disappointed that Microsoft didn't have anything to show for the platform. It's a good piece of technology with terrible support. After the initial wave of shovelware that came and went, all that was left, really, were a couple of good niche games, such as Dance Central, and a couple of interesting projects employing Kinect from the PC. While I'm happy that some games have found their niche with Kinect, it seems unfortunate that the Kinect has been so criminally underutilized, especially seeing as Microsoft packed in the Kinect with the first wave of Xbox Ones. There is a chance that we'll be seeing some more Kinect action during Gamescom, so I'll be keeping my eyes open for that. The Electronic Arts Conference was pretty cool, albeit with a bit of nonsense. They opened their conference with a teaser for Mass Effect Andromeda, which looked nice and is set to come out holiday 2016, but they didn't say much about the game at all. Next up, the new Need for Speed looks pretty decent, and it's set to come out on November 3rd, 2015. Like Need for Speed Rivals that came before it, it's set in an open world, albeit one much bigger than the aforementioned games. It's coming to the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Star Wars The Old Republic is getting a free expansion called Knights of the Fallen Empire, out on October 27, 2015. As with most of the things at EA's conference, it had a really slick CGI trailer. Now, what was definitely the cutest game shown off was Unravel, an indie game by Coldwood that looks very promising. It's an adorable platformer starring a little fellow made of yarn named, well, Yarny, of course. Yarny himself, interestingly enough, actually made it into the conference. The developer had the idea for Yarny while he was on vacation one day, so he made himself a little yarn doll and took some pictures of the yarn doll in the forest having adventures. And inevitably, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 was shown off yet again. The EA Sports games shown off were NHL 16, PGA Tour, and NBA Live 16, which features a face-scanning smartphone app that might work properly this time around. Mirror's Edge Catalyst looked fantastic. Set in a dystopia called The Glass City, it stars Faith Connors, a girl who's unsatisfied with the corrupt status quo and winds up falling in with a group called The Runners. The original Mirror's Edge game was released in 2008. While Faith's character has very definitely been redesigned, while we do know that this is an origin story, we're not totally sure on if the whole series is being rebooted. Thus far, it appears that way, as the setting has changed from near future to more futuristic. Interestingly enough, you no longer use guns in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. You see, in the original game, using guns was optional, as you could snatch them off people, but it was the weakest part of the game, and it really wasn't in the spirit of the runners, the group that you're a part of, so it's been struck from Mirror's Edge Catalyst. The combat in the original Mirror's Edge, in general, tended to break the flow of the game. From the first impressions that I've heard coming out of E3, Catalyst has, to a large degree, fixed that. Now, Rihanna Pratchett, she's in charge of writing the current Tomb Raider games, and she did write the original Mirror's Edge as well, had nice things to say about Catalyst. Even though she's not working on this project, she's happy that they kept the name for Mirror's Edge, and hopes that since the new game is open world, it'll allow players to visit the slums, which appeared in the Mirror's Edge comics, but not in the previous game. Oh, and Madden 16 is coming. It's still Madden. Save us all. Finally, Star Wars Battlefront was shown off. It looks very pretty, and you can fly high above Hoth in aerial battles, which looks very exciting. Ubisoft, meanwhile, opened their show with South Park Fractured But Whole. Make of that what you will. And then they moved on to a game called For Honor, using an incredibly manly presenter. He was very possibly a real-life Viking warrior, but Ubisoft neither confirmed nor denied this. Viking. Samurai, perhaps, eh? When your enemies are arriving at the gate, and sword is coming at your head, would you turn and run? Would you stand and fight? For Honor, a medieval sword fighting game, might be half as manly as the guy who presented it. Seriously. The game itself offers you the choice of a crusading knight, a samurai, or a viking. Now, if you liked the crew, get ready for the crew Wild Run, which the developers are promising is an overhaul of the original racing game, which was met with rather mixed reception. The Wild Run expansion is set to come out on November 17th, 
2015. Another expansion was announced, this time for Trials Fusion. It's called the Awesome Level Max, and it's set to come out on July 14, 2015, and, well, just take a look at this. Tom Clancy's The Division was shown off yet again. It's coming out on March 8, 2016 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Afterwards, Anno 2205, which is coming out November 3rd, 2015 for PC, certainly looks pretty. Now, if you're into strategy games, you might want to check this one out. It's a city-building game set in the year 2205, obviously, and in this game, you're taking things all the way up to the moon. While the previous Anno game was regarded as a good game by itself, it did suffer from some very serious problems regarding DRM. If you look at Anno 2070 on Steam right now, user reviews are mixed, and primarily it's not users complaining about the quality of the game, which in itself is fine. The problem is the DRM, and there's a good chance that the next Anno game will feature DRM that's just as bad. For Anno 2205, it might be best to hold off from pre-ordering and wait until after the game is released to find out if it has issues with DRM. Just Dance 2016, which is set to come out this October, was announced, and interestingly enough, it doesn't require a connect for the Xbox version, or the PlayStation All-Seeing Eye, or any other camera. If you have a smartphone, it can be used as a controller for the game. This is an interesting departure, but a smart move I suppose on Ubisoft's part, since not everybody has one of those devices, but almost everybody has a smartphone. Rainbow Six Siege was shown off, yet again, and this time with Angela Bassett. This time around, she's starring in the game as Agent Six. She's in charge of the elite Rainbow Team. It did make me wonder if we're going to see a trend towards having celebrities acting in video games. The last Call of Duty game, for instance, had Kevin Spacey. Perhaps we'll see Steve Buscemi next year? A man can dream. Now, if you're a fan of the Trackmania series, you'll be pleased to hear that Trackmania Turbo came out to play, this time on even more absurd tracks. Assassin's Creed Syndicate was there. London, siblings, hard times. You know the deal. At the end came the surprise of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's a game about the war on drug lords. There's no word on when it's coming out or for what platforms. While Microsoft's press conference left me impressed, and it honestly sold me on the Xbox One, I think that Sony really won E3. They as good as made everybody's dreams come true with long-awaited games, promising new IP, and a whole lot more. To start with, they opened with The Last Guardian. The game that everybody thought was dead isn't, and we got a good seven minutes of gameplay. Visually, it doesn't look a whole lot different from the original demo all those years ago, that said, the game's art style itself looks pretty satisfying. At this point in time, The Last Guardian is as good as PlayStation's equivalent of Half-Life 3. There's a whole lot of hype behind it. Anytime anybody says anything about it from within, the whole internet explodes. And yet we have no idea when it's going to be ready. Next, they showed off Horizon Zero Dawn. That game has actually won an award from us at BlackManAndRobin.com. It's the winner of the least interesting name for a very interesting looking game award. The amount of excitement that I have for the game is inversely proportionate to the way that I feel about the name. That said, it looks really, really cool. Horizon Zero Dawn is set in a post-post-apocalyptic world. It's inhabited by people and dinosaur robots. It's not too often that you see a game with mechanical monsters in a rural setting. There's something a little bit reminiscent of Enslaved about it that I like, and I can't wait to see more of the game. It's coming from Guerrilla Games, the studio behind the Killzone series, and there's no word yet on when it's coming to PlayStation. The Hitman series is coming back. We'll get back to that during Square Enix's show. Street Fighter V, which is coming to PS4 and PC, is not coming to the Xbox One anytime soon, and the PS4 version of the game is getting the beta first. A brand new gameplay trailer was shown off during E3. There were also gameplay demos available for attendees. Dreams. Coming from Media Molecule, is a very trippy game about exploring, well, dreams, created by other players. There is no word on when it's coming out, and we still have no idea how we're going to moderate the game, if at all. That said, the stage demo was very cool. 
There were also trailers for things that we've seen before. There's a chibi Final Fantasy game that's coming to PS4 and mostly forgotten Vita. Sorry, Vita fans, all five of you. And then came the big moment. Final Fantasy VII is being remade. Properly. There's no word on when it's coming, and we might wind up seeing it on the PlayStation 5, but it's being worked on. After some games from Devolver Digital were shown off, the Kickstarter for Shenmue 3 was announced. In about an hour, it raised over a million dollars and managed to crash Kickstarter's website. Shenmue 3, in case you've not heard of it, is the long-awaited finale to the Shenmue series. The original game was an open-world adventure for the Sega Dreamcast. At the time, it was tremendously expensive to create and was loved by both critics and fans. At the time of production, the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter has raised 3,347,756 dollars. Now, you might think it's a little strange that the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter goal is a mere 2 million dollars, especially considering that the original game, which was released in 1999, cost 47 million dollars. Apparently, the Kickstarter itself isn't really for funding the game, Rather, it's being used as a tool to gauge interest for publishers. After the Kickstarter then, the game is going to receive another source of funding. Riggs was announced for the Morpheus. The Morpheus, in case you've not heard of it, is Sony's in-development virtual reality headset for the PlayStation 4. Now, Riggs is a multiplayer VR arena shooter with giant mechs, and it's been drawing comparisons to the animated series IGPX, Immortal Grand Prix. The game itself looks really cool. Finally, the show ended with a live demo of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. That game is set to come out on the PlayStation 4 sometime in March of 2016. I think that's Sam's Tower. It's definitely Sam's Tower. Come on. This way. Nintendo's press conference opened with the most whimsy. They had puppets by Mr. Henson himself. That's right, folks. Nintendo Muppets. They began by announcing Star Fox Zero for the Wii U. In this game, you can transform the R-Wing into a walking mech for ground-based combat, and then take off again into the sky, which is pretty cool. They also showed off some of the already announced Skylanders superchargers, which, interestingly enough, will come with Nintendo-themed Skylanders that are also Amiibo. The two, it seems, have finally merged. A new Zelda game was announced for the 3DS, specifically The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, which is set to come out this fall. It's a multiplayer game a bit like Force Wars Adventures, but for free players. Just like Force Wars, however, single player is also available. Interestingly enough, Link's abilities in this game are decided by the outfits he wears, such as the big bomb outfit that brings, well, bombs. Remember the Japanese trailer we showed last week for Hyrule Warriors? Well, Nintendo officially announced the Western release of the game. It's set to come out early 2016 for the 3DS. As we brought out last week, this version includes extra stages from Wind Waker. Fans of Metroid were briefly excited, and then disappointed, by Metroid Prime Federation Forge for the 3DS. It's a four-player co-op FPS set in the Metroid universe, and it's set to come out next year. This is not a main Metroid adventure starring Samus. A lot of people were upset by that, but hey, the game itself does look neat. Besides the main fun action adventure mode, it also comes with a sports mode called Blast Ball. It's 3v3 laser soccer or something like that. There was a new trailer for the upcoming Fire Emblem, which is now called Fire Emblem Fates. It's quite pretty and shows off some gameplay. The game is coming out next week in Japan, and next year everywhere else for the 3DS. Speaking of Fire Emblem, remember Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem? Well, a new trailer was released. There seems to be a whole lot coming out of Atlas these days. And then there was yet another trailer for an RPG, this time for the upcoming Xenoblade Chronicles X. It was pretty cool. It's the follow-up to the well-received Xenoblade Chronicles, and Xenoblade Chronicles X is set to be released on December 4, 2015 for the Wii U. If you've been meaning to get into the Xenoblade series, you should know that the Wii version of the game is prohibitively expensive. It's kind of regarded as a collector's item of sorts. However, there was a version of Xenoblade Chronicles released for the Nintendo 3DS. However, it's only available for the new 3DS XL, which features extra processing power necessary for the game. 
Seeing as we are running a little bit short on time, I'm just going to unceremoniously skip through the rest of the trailers, which were for Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, which is a home design game based around Animal Crossing, as you may have guessed. It comes out on September 25th, 2015 for 3DS. Then there's Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, a spin-off board game that's Amiibo-dependent for the Wii U. That comes out this holiday season. Then there's Yoshi's Woolly World. That's out October 16th, 2015. Interestingly enough, that game features Amiibo made of yarn. You may have heard of Yokai Watch. It's a game about hunting the particular yokai. It's set to get a Western release this holiday season. The game is tremendously popular in Japan among the kids, and Nintendo's probably hoping it'll be successful here too. One of the last games shown off during Nintendo's conference was Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. It's coming to the 3DS Spring of 2016, and it's a pretty interesting looking platformer in which the 3D Mario world winds up meeting its parallel paper universe. I confess, I'm guilty of not having yet played the Paper Mario games. That said, I'll be looking out for it next spring. Mario Tennis will be making a comeback this holiday season, this time as Mario Tennis Ultra Smash on the Wii U. And finally, of course, Super Mario Maker is coming out on September 11, 2015 for Wii U. It'll allow you to build your own Mario levels, and as mentioned earlier, it was featured prominently in the Nintendo World Championship this year. If you happen to be watching this show the day it came out, that is, May 20th, 2015, you can try Super Mario Maker at Best Buy in the United States or Canada. If you're watching after that date, you'll just have to wait for it to come out. Unless, of course, you happen to be watching in the future, in which case, hello! I hope Terminator Genesis was good. Square Enix had one of the worst E3 press conferences I've ever seen. Honestly, it was incredibly dry, and if not for a certain exciting announcement, it would have been a total failure. It's not that I have anything in particular against Square Enix, and I'm pretty excited for some of the games that they showed off. I also don't mean this as an affront to those who worked very hard on the conference or the games shown. Unfortunately, the execution of their press conference was lacking. They opened the show with Just Cause Free. It's hard to go wrong with that, right? Wrong. Square Enix managed to make a video game about flying around on endless grappling hooks and liberating a country from a dictator boring, with an unnervingly dull narrator reading from a sordidly dull script that may as well have been a legal document for investors outlining the game and why it'll appeal to a youthful demographic. Next, Just Cause Free is coming out December 1st, 2015 for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. A new Nier game was unveiled. It's coming to the PS4 this fall, and we don't know much about it, besides the fact that it's not really a sequel to the original game. It's a new story in the world. It's in development by Platinum Games, and it stars the girl in the trailer, a young boy, and another character who's yet to be revealed. Also, during the unveiling of Nier, they had a very cringe-worthy moment. Well, we got a new behind-the-scenes trailer for the upcoming Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as a trailer for Lara Croft's Go, a turn-based mobile game in the style of Hitman Go, albeit with a Tomb Raider theme. There's no word on when it's coming out. Remember that remake of Final Fantasy VII that we got all excited for during the PlayStation conference? Well, they showed the same old trailer again. I mean, it was cool seeing it again, but, well, it didn't bring anything new to the table. There was just an off-the-cuff mention of the game coming to iOS. After that came the Kingdom Hearts 3 stuff. That's right. It's time to get excited, because we're getting... Kingdom Hearts Unchained, a mobile game that's... Well, it's cute, but I don't think I've ever heard an audience hoot so loudly, only to wind up disappointed. Wait, wait, there it is! Kingdom Hearts 3, and we still haven't a clue as to when it's being released, but there's a new trailer and the announcement that an area based on the Disney film Tangled is being worked into the game. Remember World of Final Fantasy, that cute little chibi game from earlier that's coming out next year? Well, they showed the trailer, again. Hitman for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, is set to come out on September 8, 2015. According to Square Enix, they're planning to keep this game regularly updated with fresh content, targets that may appear only once, and overall, a more dynamic approach to the way that the game works. Star Ocean, Integrity and Faithlessness, which almost took the award away from Horizon Zero Dawn for the worst named game, is coming out in 2016. It's the fifth entry in the Star Ocean series of sci-fi RPGs, and it narrowly avoided the award because the name of the game evidently has something to do with the story. 
This fifth installment in the Star Ocean series is coming to the PlayStation 4. The next game that they showed was Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which they should have ended the show with. It's coming out next year for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, and it's set two years after the events of Human Revolution, in a world in which people with cybernetic augmentations are treated differently from those without. Well, I guess that's a bit of an understatement, really. The game's marketing is pitching it as a mechanical apartheid. The use of the term apartheid in official marketing did raise a few eyebrows around the internet. I'm no stranger to talking about controversy, but frankly, I'm not gonna touch this one. The show could have ended there, but alas, it ended with Project Setsuna, an RPG that they announced coming from Tokyo RPG Factory, which is a brand new studio owned by Square Enix. We have no idea what Project Setsuna is about, just a slideshow of pretty music and concept art. It's not a spin-off or a remake, but a completely new series. It's not nearly as exciting as a CGI trailer, and it isn't as informative as gameplay footage. It was possibly the lowest point in Square Enix's press conference. It was worse than the guy in the creepy mask, and it was worse than the translator who fell asleep on the job. Sure, Bethesda pulled the same thing with Fallout 4, but at least they showed actual gameplay afterwards. Showing off Project Setsuna this early broke what little momentum they had. Well, that's it for this week's game news. Oh. No, it's not. Well, even though E3 happened this week and we had to say a lot about it, still other things happened in the world of gaming. Legends of Pixelia was released on Steam Early Access. It's a cute pixel art ARPG with some roguelike elements. Thus far, it has gotten good critical reception. Even though some elements of the game, such as the dungeon, are randomly generated, it's largely a game of skill. Additionally, it features multiplayer, so if you've ever wanted to swing a tiny pixel sword at your enemies, at your friends, frenemies, here's your chance. If you purchase the survival game Ark Survival Evolved during the ongoing Steam Summer Sale, you'll get silly dinosaur sunglasses, and if you've been playing the game before, you'll get them anyway. The game's still in early access, but thus far it sold a lot of copies, and fans really seem to enjoy it. A new trailer was released for The Tomorrow Children. It's a game inspired by Soviet Russia, set in a future in which humanity has been decimated after an attempt to merge humanity into a single consciousness kinda fell through. The game is an open-world action-adventure in which you play as a sort of clone. Your goal is to enter the void and return humanity to its greatness. There's no word on a release date, but it is coming exclusively to the PlayStation 4. During the PC Gamer E3 show, which was kind of a black sheep of conferences that we don't have the time to talk about on today's episode, Planet Coaster was unveiled. It's a theme park tycoon from the developers of Elite Dangerous. It's currently available for pre-order, and it looks pretty cool. Finally, we're closing with a Kickstarter for a game called Diluvian. Now, Diluvian is an underwater exploration game, as well as a submarine combat game. That's right, two for the price of one. It's set to be released in December for Mac and PC, and in addition to the aforementioned gameplay elements, you also have to manage your crew. Diluvian draws inspiration from games like Wing Commander and Freelancer, but it combines these elements with a couple of elements from FTL Faster Than Light. For instance, during a battle, of course, you'll have your weapons equipped and all, and you can fight with them in real time. That said, they'll work better if you have the right staffers manning them. The game is being put together by a team of five people. I really recommend checking out Diluvian by Arachnid Games on Kickstarter. It looks very promising, and I'm thinking about putting my hat into the ring for this one. Well, that's it for this week's game news. Be sure to stick with Black Man and Robin for all the latest game news, previews, reviews, and interviews. You can check us out on our website, blackmanandrobin.com, or follow us on Twitter at blackmanandrobin. You can also follow me at Jordan underscore Cameron for my other views.